Coming up on Half Mile of Hell. I come here to win. And right now we're not. We're down to six horses. That's not good. There's a reason you win, and that's because it's the utmost thing in your life. All of a sudden, he swore right in my ear. I said, what's the matter? I didn't even say nothing. And she just keeps cussing at me. They give me two seconds for that. I don't understand it. Absolutely the most frustrating thing I've ever been through is these guys. It's the West's original extreme sport. Four horses hitched to a wagon, racing hell-bent for leather around a half-mile track. The stakes are high, and disaster is only a heartbeat away. These are the Cowboys, and these are their stories. So hang on tight, because you're about to ride the Half Mile of Hell. The coal mines of Drumheller, Alberta, are no place for the fate of heart. Here at the now abandoned Atlas Mine, workers suffered a variety of untimely and gruesome deaths. You could haul a lot of cars with these machines, but the problem was that plenty of guys died just simply looking behind them and the timber would uh, smack them in the back of the head and often decapitate them or um, break their necks. We call her a ghost maker because she killed so many guys here at the mine. It's said that ghosts now haunt the mine, searching for a peace that may never come. And it's Rick's fascination with the mine's ghosts that has brought him here today. Tremendous history here. Old abandoned mines, mining towns, cowboys, dinosaurs here. This is a pretty neat area. This building right here is known to be one of the creepiest buildings on site. They went into one of the coal rooms and they were digging all the stuff out and they found a corpse there. Often when you're in the temple, you can see a lady in a brown dress walking up those entry stairs and coming into here and then she just walks back down. The break here at the mine is just what Rick needs after the last show. On day two of the Edmonton Chuck Wagon Derby, Rick's cousin, Barry Hodgson, upset his wagon. The impact injured Barry's shoulder, so Rick pulled double duty, driving Barry's wagon and his own for the rest of the event. Now, Rick needs to focus on himself. Uh, we're sitting 15th in the world standings right now. That doesn't mean we're gonna take it easy. We come to run and we come to win every single night. There are many kinds of ghosts. Here in Drumheller, Rick is about to be haunted again by one that has bothered him all season. While others spend their afternoon getting away from the horses, Kelly Sutherland just won't leave them alone. Kelly monitors the stats of certain horses throughout the summer. Here's a horse that's got a ton of early speed. He was first, 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 second, fifth by six and a quarter. He can't go a mile eh, as a lead horse. The whole sport has changed, and I think if you don't start studying and using all the information, that uh, you can't stay on top or stay competitive anyway. When the chuck wagon season ends, he'll start rebuilding for next year. There's a reason you win, and that's because it's the utmost thing in your life. I spend basically every waking hour and probably lots of sleeping hours trying to accomplish that. I don't necessarily think that's the healthiest thing in the world, but that's kind of the way I was built. Many athletes who excel at their sports succeed at the expense of others. No one knows this more than Kelly. The only reason I have, you know, two beautiful daughters and a son that's done very well is because of my wife. Because for seven months of the year, I was obsessed with a horse, not, not anything else. In Edmonton, Kelly's obsession wasn't enough to make up any ground in the world standings. A knocked barrel and a less than royal 25th place finish have given leader Reg Johnstone a 40-point edge. It'll be tough to catch a guy like Reg Johnstone. There's uh, three or four of us that are right there within a handful of points. With only four events remaining in the season, Kelly needs to make a move, and he needs to do it here. For a competitor like Kelly, second place might as well be last. I know what this is. 
Do you know what this is? Is that dinosaur poop? Because that's what it looks like. Yeah. Unlike his father, Mark Sutherland has no trouble taking time off here in Drumheller. Today, he's out with the family, browsing a local souvenir store. That's so cool. Like, this is awesome. Drumheller is great because this is actually where we, in tradition, have done a lot of family stuff, and, and it's kind of a relaxing thing. Well, it's a plant eating dinosaur's bones. It's got a carnivore's teeth marks on it. When it killed it and ate it, it chopped those teeth. Mark will most likely finish in the middle of the pack, far from the championship title and far from having to attend the qualifying runoff. You know, I actually some days find myself getting a little bit bored. I've qualified for the Stampede. For me, there's, other than show titles, there's nothing to really run for. Even more disheartening is a streak that now stands at 13 years. 13 years without a single win. Uh, I'm not necessarily happy being just the, you know, the fastest chuck wagon driver that almost won something. Coming from a chuck wagon bloodline has many benefits, but winning when it counts may not be one of them. Not unless Mark can figure out what it takes. On the eve of the Dinosaur Derby, expectations begin to build around the barns. But here in the Badlands, ghosts linger among the canyons, ready to punish those who dare to hope. At the Dinosaur Downs, a caravan of trucks and trailers makes camp above the river valley. This will be home for the next three days. It's day one of the Badlands Dinosaur Derby. Chad Harden isn't about to go away quietly. He's 11th in the world standings. And while there's no hope of winning the championship, there is something Chad has his eye on, a new truck. Wife went for a doctor's appointment the one day in her old Oldsmobile car, decided that she'd crater right in the middle of the road. I was just out and be talking to her on the phone and she just left the doctor's office and telling me how that went. And all of a sudden, she basically swore right in my ear and, I said, what's the matter? I didn't even say nothing. And she just keeps cussing at me. And then finally I get out of her that the cars broke down in the middle of the road and she's got the baby with her. The top eight drivers at the end of Drumheller will compete at the next event for the use of a new Dodge Diesel. And Chad's wife, Dory, has been in the market for a new vehicle ever since the old one broke down. As long as I can run three days clean, I've got a good chance of getting to the top eight. With the extra motivation, Chad is ready to lay it all out for the Dodge. If I don't give her everything I got here, we ain't gonna make the top eight, so I might as well give her a good whirl here and see what happens. Rick Fraser also has horsepower on his mind. He's in the market, but not for a truck, and Rick isn't especially thrilled about it. At this stage of the season, there's about three reasons why you'd be out buying horses from another driver. One is to stay out of the runoff. One is to qualify for the Calgary Stampede. And thirdly, like what's happening with us, we're just running out of horses. Rick is out of the running for the Dodge. He's already qualified for next year's Calgary Stampede, and he's a long way from the runoff. Right now, he's just trying to finish off the season. Rick's cousin, Barry Hodgson, is 19th in the world standings. He's in for next year's Calgary Stampede, but with his injury, that position is now in jeopardy. What's your prognosis? Are you gonna make her back? No, they said about 10 to 12 weeks minimum. The next, uh, right after here, before Strathmore, I gotta get some screw back to Edmonton, get some screws put in. I was just uh, wondering if I could uh, bug you to uh, drive for me again here to the next couple days. With no hesitation, Rick not only commits to driving Barry's wagon for the show, but for the rest of the season. 
I feel pretty honored that another driver would come over and ask me to drive these horses. I do. Your outfit drives good. Nice. There. Makes me look good. They're old horses. No. Yes. We'll Thanks, have sir. everything ready for you. You bet you See you up there. In the late afternoon, racing gets underway. Early heats are fast and clean. In the sixth heat, Rick Fraser is in the wagon box for his cousin. Rick has a decent start, but he's blocked from reaching the rail. He ends up taking the long run around. Tonight, Barry's horses are slow, and his wagon finishes 32nd out of 36. Certainly not the kind of run Rick had hoped for. There's little time to think about it. Rick returns the wagon to Barry's barn. Then he's off to his own wagon for heat number eight. He knows he's not likely to catch the leaders in the world standings. So Mark Sutherland is now working new horses into his lineup. I tried a new horse in Edmonton, and he worked real well. And I'm going to try him again here on night number one, and uh, probably end up trying at least two new horses tonight. It's an all too familiar place for Mark. Out of contention, and almost ready to look toward next year. Rick is slow out of the barrels. Even with his unproven horses, Mark takes the early lead. Mark Sutherland finishes 11th on the day, a promising display for his new stock. Rick is 23rd. I come here to win, and right now we're not. We're down to six horses. We made four fantastic turns in Calgary, and then now nothing again. Drive the same four horses and nothing. So I, I don't know. I don't know. Chad Harden will need all the help he can get this weekend as he struggles to reach number eight in the world standings and his shot at a new Dodge truck. Got to get to the top eight. That was one of my goals this year was to win one of the major shows and we're running out of the major shows so I'd like to get at least in that top eight. An important ally will be on the sidelines, his wife, Dory. Tonight will be the first actual taping that she's back at it so That'll also be quite a bit helpful. Chad is hooked with two of the drivers he needs to pass before he can grab that top eight position. Outrun them this weekend, and he'll be running for a new truck. The other two drivers outturn Chad in the barrels, forcing him wide. There's little Chad can do. It's a long way around the track, chasing the other wagons. Chad digs himself deeper into the hole, slipping further away from that number eight spot. It's a new show, a new heat, 
a new chance for the man who lives and breathes chuck wagon racing to begin the climb to regain his crown. It's day one of the Badlands Dinosaur Derby in Drumheller, Alberta. The final heat showcases the top three drivers on the tour. Jerry Bremner, Kelly Sutherland, and leader Reg Johnstone. If Kelly is going to make a serious assault on the world title, he needs to start now. There won't be anything but good old fashioned wagon racing. It'll be tight and uh, that's the way I like to run. Kelly is first out of the barrels. Jerry Bremner has the rail. Kelly looks for a chance to move down, but there's nowhere to go. Bremner takes the heat, and Kelly Sutherland edges Johnstone for second place. Though Kelly gains a few points on Reg, he is overtaken by Bremner in the world standings. Now, Kelly is chasing two wagons. Driver Rick Fraser is in a bind. Several of his best horses are out of the lineup, and it shows in his results. 23rd on the day, where he's usually in the top 10. And that's unacceptable. I was closer to Darcy there. When the chores and sponsor commitments are taken care of, Chad finally sits down to watch and evaluate his race. Back up. I watch all the tapes for myself to see how my horses are doing, how I'm doing compared to the heat I'm in. And just in case I do have to buy something later on in the year that I can scope out who might be selling something that I might want to buy. But right now it's just for my own use and seeing how, how the horses are going. When you put a new horse in, it's really good to see what he's doing. You want to watch that again? I got to give my wife lots of credit. She's been busy and I've, she's had a full summer, that's for sure. And when she had pneumonia and pleurisy and everything else, I mean, you couldn't have had it any worse. And she's feeling better, the horse is feeling better, and I think it's just time our summer turned around, and I think that's about the stage of the year we're at right now. It seems like everything's headed in the right direction. On the morning of day two, Rick Fraser visits one of the few drivers with horses to spare. Is this Chad's here? I'm not dealing with you on the horse, I'm dealing with Dory, because he's a nicer person than you are. Yeah, yeah, you know what she wants? Go ahead. Let's make a deal. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Negotiating with one Harden is tough enough. Negotiating with two? What do you want? How much do you want to pay? Look at this. This is $2,500. That's definitely not enough. OK. After about an Oldsmobile car. What's this Oldsmobile car? The one that left me stranded in Wintaskin with my newborn baby. So now you think you want to deal with me on the horse or her? Probably yeah. you, because we can go yeah. look at a vehicle. Yeah. This is a dandy. And I do know. You yep. have a van for me? Yeah. It is actually a, it is a van. That's what I want. So what did we say, 65 cash? Excuse me, I'm in this conversation then too. I got a new baby. She's got to get a new van. Okay, go get your cash. Put your finger over here and let me smack it with a hammer. That's all I said. Five over what you said in Edmonton. Six or seven. Too much for it. Okay, then it stays in the board then. Yeah, yeah no, that's okay. That's fine. Yeah. Can I board? No. No horse, no vehicle, no deal. Rick will have to make do with the horses he has. But at least he has some new help to care for them. Both Rick Fraser and Chad Harden have opened their barns to the Encana 4-H mentorship program. 
It's an opportunity for young people to learn leadership skills that go beyond animal care. And it also shows them another side. It's not just a, a drunken party. You know, there's a lot of work and effort that goes into this thing. Oh, oh, grab him by the line. In his stand. Hey. Grab him by the line. This year in Canada and the 4-H Albertas have expanded the program to five drivers and all been taking kids at pretty well every stop on the tour and given the chance for a kid to spend a day with us cleaning barns, going to sponsors, breakfast, helping the mascot out or just shoveling poop and having fun with it. So It's important to give back to any community that you go to, to the people that are in that community. It's, that kind of thing is really important. Right here. This will be the start line and the finish line, okay? So I'll back you up and you want to be over here when you start, because you're straighter. With time to spare before the racing starts, Mark and Dayton Sutherland take to the dirt track behind the barns. Ready, go. <laughs> Come here. At the age of eight, Dayton already knows what he wants to do when he grows up. 39 seconds. When I grow up, I want to be a wagon racer just because of the speed. I just want to be like my dad. You hit that a little bit fast, and when you landed, it kind of went like this. Eh? Sometimes you got to slow down going into the turns and speed up going out of the turns. Dayton shares the family need for speed, but he'll have to live with a name that is both a springboard and an anchor. I think that it was very difficult when Mark started his career. That's what I told him. You're going to be under tremendous, you know, pressure, mental pressure all the time to be compared to, to me. It's difficult for him because when he gets in tough competition, he's always with me, and I mean that that might play a psychological game with him, I don't know. My grandpa says I should start getting on an out riding horse already. 37.93. I'm gonna start when I'm like 10 or something. He started when he was nine, but. One second, seven one hundredths faster. That's about how much I lost day money by last night. Okay, guys, hook the leaders up. Thread the lines. Just make sure everything gets hooked up right. It's day two, and Rick Fraser is looking for better results for Barry and for himself. Turn up, okay, turn them loose. But the ghosts are waiting. You got the safeties on now. Turn up, okay, turn them loose. It's day two of the Badlands Dinosaur Derby, and Rick Fraser feels the pressure driving for his cousin, Barry. All three wagons leave the infield together. Rick and Kirk Sutherland swap lanes as they round the first turn. Though he's behind leader Leo Turnier, Rick will have the inside going down the home stretch.
It's a tight race, and Rick finishes a close second in the heat. That's probably what you We'll see where the bear shits in the bush tomorrow night, boys. Okay, see you guys later. Rick hurries to pilot his own wagon. Rick's horses give him the start he needs. He takes the rail and keeps Tyler Helmig wide. Mark Sutherland is well back. The rest of the track is Fraser's as he cruises to an easy victory. He finishes 19th overall, a good recovery from the previous night. Chad Harden gets a good start in the ninth heat. He holds the rail position against his rivals. Tonight, Chad is better. Luke Tournier and Darcy Flad run out of track to catch him. It's a top 10 run that adds valuable points to his world standings. More important, he outran every driver between himself and that number eight spot. It'll all come down to the final night. As the sun edges toward the Drumheller horizon, Kelly Sutherland rolls onto the track. He's now chasing Johnstone and Bremner for the world title. Three wagons enter the track as one, a tight, crowd-pleasing start. Through the first turn, they battle for position. Things look good for Kelly until the final turn, where Heat 12 turns into a two-wagon race without Sutherland. Kelly loses the race and loses ground in the world standings. Now, if I'm ahead by this much, can I push somebody out? Ease them out. That's what I did in uh, Pinocchio. Well, I am going to protest, and I'm going to write. Before the night is over, a ghost returns to haunt Rick Fraser. For the third time this season, he is charged with wagon interference. Yeah, I didn't ram him. I just tried to ease him out. He wouldn't move, so I stayed there. Thanks, Troy, for coming over. Oh, we're coming down the home stretch. You give me two seconds for, for Barry's outfit. The rule is, if you are ahead, you can ease somebody out. I tried to ease Kirk out coming down the home stretch. I had a half a horse's head on him. And I tried to ease him. Kirk didn't want to go, so we're far enough behind. I just left them stay there. They give me two seconds for that. I don't understand it. I'm going to protest the call. Heat six. I was ahead of Kirk by a horse head coming down the home stretch. As long as you don't bump, you. As long as you don't bang. That's the word I'm looking for. I tried to ease him out. He would not move. Have you got a check? Get it. Boy, this is just the most frustrating thing you go through. Protester? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks.
They don't. And yes, I am really critical. I keep saying I'm just... Rick Fraser has been hit with his third wagon interference penalty of the season on a call that he thinks shouldn't have been made. He protests, but the penalty stands. Ray, we have to sit down with these guys at the next show for the guys that are trying to make the Calgary Stampede, for the guys that are running for the pickup. Absolutely the most frustrating thing I have ever been through is these guys. I want to see the film tomorrow morning. Yeah. It's too much for Rick. He appeals the call, but he'll have to wait until tomorrow for an answer. What they decided is they're going to just leave it what it is, and they're going to try and change the system to... You know, and the rest of those guys know what's wrong. They do. They do know what's wrong. So we're left hung out to drive. They don't want to start overruling the judges and opening up the can of worms. Did you guys look at all the evidence, like I asked you to? No. No. Why? Why not? They didn't want it. He began the season wondering if he even wanted to race anymore. And it's been nothing but frustration ever since. Rick Fraser has reached his limit. I am done. I'm not gonna waste my time and be frustrated the rest of my life, Susie. No more. You know what, it, it's just absolutely miserable when you know something's wrong and nobody's willing to step out and fix it. It's just miserable. Chad Harden returns to make one more pitch to sell his horse. It ain't gonna make no difference. Rick has more pressing issues. He delivers the judge's news to Barry. I went through that process. They agreed with me and won't do nothing. But it should happen. I'm not worried. It's not the end of the world if we don't get the Calgary. It is the end of the world, Barry, because that's what you got me here for. I feel bad for Rick. I mean, it, Rick's fine with me, but maybe this is putting too much stress on him. I've mentioned to Sue already, you know, I hope this ain't too much pressure on him. And she says, Rick is, uh, this is Rick's passion, driving. And obviously it is, because he's a good driver. He does well. We'll get, it, we'll get him tonight. We got barrel one. And... Barry now has fewer points than he came with. Worse, he's dropped completely out of the top 22, and maybe qualification for next year's Calgary Stampede. A lot of this is luck. And if you have some bad luck, it haunts you. On the motocross track behind the barns, a showdown is brewing. Chad Harden and Shane Carter haven't raced against each other all season. But now, they're about to duke it out like men. Oh! <laughs> Just a minute. Mina. Come on, Kathy, where are you at? <laughs> had a half-assed successful year, and I mean, we have to have some fun around here. It's a long way till the end, and we've got to have some fun. I got that. You're serious all the time about wagon racing, and, and you try and have fun doing other things. Just to go and do something like that, we're just sure enjoyment. pretty fair for a long time and then he had to cheat a little bit so we cheat a little bit and they say if you're not cheating you're not trying we did take a little bit of a shortcut and they just totally cheated they went right off the track and went to the finish line strategy would win at all costs because if i would have let him win i never would have heard the end of it hey, our cheat was better our cheat was definitely better <laughs> Well, I know one thing, he drives more competitive here. You can tell he didn't care about the Kubota as much as he does his horses, because he doesn't like getting them hit, but the Kubota was an issue. He hit us a couple times in the first two corners. And... It doesn't matter if it's with the wagons or, or with the Kubotas, you still got to win. And we'll have round two next year. <laughs> if desperate times call for desperate measures, Rick Fraser is going to do whatever it takes to scare away his ghosts.
Oh, I think I could drive this. You let me fly it, and I'll let you drive my horses. We'll see. Oh, yeah, I know what we we'll see means. <laughs> we'll see, that's what my wife says all the time. Yeah? That means no. <laughs> In search of an activity that will take his mind off his troubles, Rick takes daughter Kaylee for a different kind of ride. The tour takes the Frasers through the river valley and coolies through rock formations and fossil beds that date back to the age of dinosaurs. Sometimes a change is as good as a rest. For a while at least, Rick thinks about something other than chuck wagons. You guys are very professional. It was good, but you know what? The best part of the whole thing is getting my feet back on the ground where they belong. I don't look like a bird. I, I'm not. Holy shit! That's not good. There's something bad behind this unit. Moments after the helicopter lands, a surprise windstorm rattles the barns, sending some camps into chaos. The wind dies almost as fast as it begins. A disturbing omen going into night number three. It's the final night of the Badlands Dinosaur Derby. Barry Hodgson calls out some last minute pointers to Rick Fraser. Determined to put his cousin back in good standing, Rick Fraser wears his game face as he takes the reins of Barry's wagon. Okay, guys, on snap the wheelers. Tonight marks a new day in the quest for the Calgary Stampede. Rick hits a barrel, a five-second penalty. There isn't a team fast enough that can make up for that kind of deficit. Barry's wagon finishes 35th on the day, second last. Through the entire Drumheller event, Barry's point total is a crushing negative six, where he'd normally pick up 80 or 90 points. Mark Sutherland rolls onto the track. His own ghosts never far away. If I knew how to be a world champion, I guess I'd be a world champion. I'd be the guy driving the pickup that says 10 time. I'm still struggling with that. It disappoints me, it embarrasses me. And how do I change that? Well, it's simple, you just go faster. Mark is last out of the barrels. He chases Rick Fraser and leader Tyler Helmig around the track. But he won't be there tonight. Rick Fraser puts together a good run in the mud. He's faster than Mark Sutherland by a full second. Looking for a run that will restore his confidence, Rick Fraser discovers it's not going to happen here in Drumheller. Tonight, both outriders were late. What are those guys doing? More penalties, more disappointment for Rick. In his quest to make the top eight in the world standings and a shot at the tour truck, Chad Harden has already worked the numbers. 
top two run tonight and third in the average gives us a shot to run for the tour truck next week. <laughs> this will be Chad's most important run of the season. It's the most important race of his season. Chad Harden needs a top five run. Chad is last out of the barrels. And while he's able to run with Luke Tournier through the first half of the race, by the third turn, it looks like it's over. Then, down the home stretch, Chad's horses find another gear. He is second to Luke by a tenth of a second. Chad's horses have done their part. Now his fate is in the hands of others. In heat 10 are the drivers he needs to pass, and Chad is quick to watch their race. The heat is slow, almost two seconds slower than Chad's, and that could mean up to 20 points in the standings. More than enough. Now, Chad's looking for penalties, any penalties that will knock these drivers out of contention. Clean lane, clean in the infield. Let's go back to Barney here, time. Well, we give it a whirl. Yep. In the final heat, Kelly Sutherland has the all-important barrel one position. On a short, fast track like this one, it's the closest thing to a sure victory. Kelly wins the heat, but the margin of victory is small, just two one hundredths of a second. He's third overall on the day. But Reg Johnstone is fourth, and Kelly only gains one point in the world standings. Not only did he lose ground this weekend to Johnstone, he allowed Jerry Bremner to pass him in the world standings. However, all three have now secured their spot in next week's playoff pool for the new Dodge truck. Oh, she's going to be tight. There's going to be all four Can of us understand? within like 10 points. Yeah. Penalties to other drivers and a slow track put Chad Harden on the bubble. Be close. We'll be sitting up in the average good. With all races now complete, the results come through on the Chuck Wagon radio broadcast. At 772 and a half points, sixth is Neil Walshenbaugh at 763. Doug Irvine is at seventh at 720 and a half. And grabbing that last, the eighth spot, the final playoff spot for the Dodge Pro Tour Championship, 
Lane McGilvery at 717 points. Just missing it, it was Luke Turnier at 709 points. So we didn't want a truck, we wanted a van anyway, so... Congratulations, guys. Gracious in defeat, Chad seeks out the man who took the eighth and final spot. Oh, you're so welcome. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thanks, Chad. Congratulations. Thanks, I'll just win it, eh? Yeah. <laughs> One step closer, anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> That's the main thing. Oh, tough break. Had the wrong draw on Luke. We needed the inside draw. We knew that this week. We had to outturn him two out of three days, and he outturned us two or three days. So, one of those things. Next year. At the track, Ray Crotto Jr. collects his third Dinosaur Derby buckle in three years. Barry Hodgson drops from 16th spot all the way to 27th. It'll be a long climb back into contention for a trip to the Calgary Stampede. My goal for Barry is the same goal as he had when he hooked up this spring. Let's make the Calgary Stampede. And that's what we're gonna do. That's what we're going to do. The Badlands are a place of restless spirits, haunting from without and from within. In wagon racing, escaping them is easy. Just run faster. problems this year. I know a hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Congratulations, Ray Quattro Jr. An unprecedented three in a row Badlands Dinosaur Derby Championship run. On behalf of the World Gold Cup Wagon Association, Dodd Cup at the 2007 edition of the Badlands Dinosaur Derby.